So if I, if I can just start by, by saying that today marks phase three of our Easter Road toll campaign for 2012. And it's a very important day. And the reason, of course, is, is multifold. The first is that we've got a lot of children uh, returning to school uh, after a holiday break. Uh, and that's always a difficult time. It can be problematic. Uh, young children uh, excited to return to school. So we like to have a very good police presence, a very effective police presence in school zones over that period. I think the other thing uh, that's important, of course, is the fact that school zone times in some instances will have changed across south-east Queensland, and that's uh, to bring them into line so that all school zone hours in south-east Queensland are between 7am and 9am, and, uh, and, 9 and of course in the afternoon from 2pm to 4pm. Uh, and that's standardised across south-east Queensland now. So drivers need to be mindful of the fact that there may be some changes to the uh, time zone times uh, in their school zone areas. Uh, and I, I think the final thing to say is that at the end of school holidays there's still some uh, holiday traffic on the road, still some people returning uh, to both work and to school. Uh, so it's really important that people are quite vigilant uh, whilst they're driving, particularly over this, uh, this coming uh, day and the re remainder of the week. And you're taking this, no excuses now. That's just a message people have got to get into their heads about uh, at 7 to 9 and, and 2 to 4. I think, I think that's the key, that standardisation is, is really important. Seven to nine, two to four, every school day of the year. And I think if people remember that, and if people are vigilant to make sure that they are checking their own school zones to see if there's been any sort of change, um, that's a really important thing. Um, there is a high degree of vulnerability of road users in and around school zones. That's the nature of young children and roads. Uh, so we would urge people to take special care. Uh, of course, as you know, this is uh, uh, the National Youth Week this week. Um, the loss of a child or the injury of a child is terrible at any time. It would be a tragic irony if a child was to be injured or, or killed at a school zone uh, during the National Youth Week. So you give fair warning that there will be sort of blitzes around the school zone? Yes, today and for the remainder of this week, uh, uh, there will be a significant police presence and motorists will notice this in and around school zones. Uh, and, and of course that's because we are here to support parents, carers and teachers as they ensure the safe return of their children to school. Do you have any statistics on how many people were fined in school zones over the past 12 months? No, I haven't got that information with me unfortunately, Is no. Well we find, that, uh, we find that it's far more common than it ought to be. Uh, we do uh, spend a lot of our resources and times in and around school zones. Um, and, and I've, got, I've got to tell you that we are routinely disappointed by the speed that some people travel through school zones at. Now, I'd like to think that, that this discussion that we're having today and this information that's getting out into the community will underscore the point that school zones are areas in which there are vulnerable road users uh, and it would be an absolute tragedy if one of our young children was killed as a result of a speeding motorist in a school zone. Well, one would assume, you know, drivers have enough smarts not to deliberately speed where there are kids, so it's got to be a sort of complacency or something like that, or just lack of awareness. I think you're right. I think sometimes the, 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 uh, the driving task becomes quite mundane, and it's not unusual for people to lose focus and lose concentration. And I guess that's why we're urging people to take a good look around their school zones and the areas that they drive in these days to make sure that if there has been any change, they're aware of that change. So I guess we're encouraging people just to focus on the task at hand. And as I say, particularly over this period, as young children are returning to school, as some families are still returning from holidays, and of course with this change that some people will notice uh, to school zone timings in their area. Do you have any information from this morning's blitzes as to how many people were caught or what speeds they were doing? No, not yet. That information will be accumulated over the course of the next day or two and we'll certainly have some information to, to look at that. I think what's important too is that the information that we gather today will inform future intelligent deployment of our traffic resources into the future. So this is a fairly major blitz that we're having around in and around school zones. If the results are disappointing, in other words, if there are lots of people that we locate speeding, well, you can bet that we'll be uh, ramping up our enforcement at subsequent return to school periods. When exactly did those time zones change over? As of one minute past midnight today, so it's one minute past midnight on the 16th of April. 
Oh. In the southeast, the rest of Queensland's coming in June, is that right? Yes. Uh, by July, we anticipate that. Uh, so the southeast corner of the state has become formalised, has uh, has uh, consolidated its timings. Outside of the southeast corner of the state, we anticipate by July, all um, school zone times will come into uh, into uniform standard across the state.